Hi and welcome back. Today is our second episode of the series of videos about k-means. We discussed in previous videos what was k-means. K-means is a clustering method for identifying clusters in a dataset. We discussed how to use pandas, matplotlib, numpy, how to create synthetic data for understanding how k-means works. Today we're going to use real-world data for normalizing data and how to compare how normalizing improves k-means performance. Let's see next. Okay, first of all, we have to call k-means from the scikit-learn library, and we are going to load our data. Here, we have some data about shopping, where we have different columns or features, custom ID, gender, age, annual income, and spending score. So, we can have different information regarding shopping as for example gender age and income and spending score the idea here is to cluster or to group people based in these features we can say okay the younger persons have uh, a greater spending score or how it works it could be so simple to use a spending score only for grouping these persons k-means will help us with this we use python for improving or creating our grouping faster remember Okay, we have in this data set 200 observations. That's enough for creating our clusters, our desired clusters. But remember, we talk about which number of parameters k-means need. k-means need only, needs only one parameter, that is number of clusters. How to know the number of clusters or the optimal number of clusters in advance? That's a good question. We are going to say, or going to, going to suppose that we already know more or less how many clusters we have. In future videos, we're going to talk about discovering this number of clusters with k-means. For making uh, this video a little bit, a little bit more understandable, we're just going to use uh, three different columns: age, annual income, and spending score. Why? Because we don't need custom ID. This is just for listing. Gender. Okay, gender is a categorical variable that we can change. Remember that k-means works with quantitative data. That means that male and females, we have to change them from category variables to encoding. We're going to, we need to encode this information, male and females, zero for males, one for females. And then it's going to be easier for us to use k-means. Okay, but in this case, I'm just going to use age, annual income, and spending score, okay? I don't want any bias about, okay, males spend less than females. Okay, that's why I am going to avoid that. How to drop this information? So we use drop our data frame, customer data, as you can see here. Columns, we're going to drop customer ID and gender. And axis equals one because we're talking about the columns. Remember, if you are talking about observation, it's axis equals zero. There are other ways to drop this information. Yes, of course, use an iLock. Okay, here. This is the main topic in this video, normalizing data. Why to normalize data and what does it mean? Okay, normalize means to work with minimum values and maximum values. What the function will do is something like this. We have some value called x, for example, x and for normalize x. We have x minus mean divided by max value minus mean value. This is what this function will do, normalize data. Normalized data will change every observation, every observation, actually each cell. If for example, here we have 30 uh, uh, female with that is 31 years old, and we're going to change this value using the minimum value in this category, in age, divided by the maximum age that Python finds in this column minus the minimum value. And then that value will be stored in this position, in 31, for example, here, as you can see, 5, 0.58. Okay, that means that 0.58 is more close to the center of our values rather than the minimum value. Okay, it's in the center. On the contrary, for example, this one, it's an A, an advanced H, if we compare it to this this one over here, 0.24. That's what normalize, normalize does. The same goes for the other columns, annual income, 15, 15, 16, 17, and so on. Or a spending score. The greater the value here, the more is in the original data. But remember, 
this information will go from zero, the minimum value, that's the minimum value, to one corresponding to max value. Okay, that means it's like we have less than zero, no, we cannot. Greater than one, no. That's the idea about normalizing. We will see now how this normalization improves k-means, okay, and how it's gonna help us to visualize the information in a better way. Let's see. Once we create our normalized data, in this case I'm gonna call it data, we can call k-means. I'm gonna say, okay, I think, I really believe that there are four clusters in this data. And then we fit our object k-means with data, as you can see here, fit k-means, remember this k-means is my object in this case, k-means uppercase is the function for clustering, and then where's it tells us, okay, we already fit your object with four clusters. That means that we already create our groups. And then we have here, using the function labels, k-means is our object that we already fit, point, labels, ah, okay, our 200 observations are clustered already. And let's see the results. Why it's better for k-means to work with normalized data? As you remember, data, this data frame, is a normalized data, okay? Let's see, once we group the data, we can give a different color for each observation. In this case, we have three-dimensional data, but I'm gonna show you only two, age and annual income. We can change this, of course, we can change it and see the, uh, the combination of annual income versus spending score, for example. Okay, but I'm just gonna use this scatter plot using age and annual income. Okay, each color represents one group. As you can see, the normalized data is, it's a part, it has been partitioned in this way. The red group means one group, purple another group, and so on. As you can see, k-means comes and partitioned the data in this way. We have a centroid here, centroid here, centroid here, and centroid here. Our original data, our original data without normalizing was a little bit more messy, as you can see. Here, as you can see, I plot customer data. Customer data is the original data, and the, okay? And we have age and an annual income, and given the color after clustering using k-means. What's the difference here? that the original data, as you can see, it was a little bit more messy. You can see this red red dot here is not close enough to these ones than this one over here. First of all, because this is three-dimensional data, I'm just plotting two dimensions, okay? That's a good observation. And why the normalize works? I don't understand. Okay, that's big. As you can see here, once we have, well, or better saying, before normalizing the data, if we start, partitioning our data, we could cut here, 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 for example. However, with the normalization, it was even easier for k-means to partition our data because there are more spaces among our data. As you can see, I just throw a line here for cutting, another one here, and another one here. It's easier for k-means to find the centroids once the data has been normalized. There is a huge difference when I'm gonna start reading the groups too. As you can see, if this is H, is the H from zero to 0.6, normalized data, of course, but re remember that we can reverse this, okay? Also, we can find information here about the second group, mm, up near 0.55 for H to 100%. Ah, I just need to find the center of H, what is the mean value, from here to here, of course, and then say, ah, okay, well, there's one group among the 50% of H, of course, well, 50%, the percentile 15, 50 to 100%, that is one group that I can cluster regarding my information about H, annual income, and the spending S score. The same for, for annual income, the people with less incomes are grouped here. Ah, okay, one group, it's easy to see. That is, the younger with less annual income have or are grouped in one group, as you can see here. The same goes for this group here. Young people, but with a high annual income, are grouped in one single group or one cluster. 
If the other person over here are people that are older, but with annual income be under the 70 percentile. So it's easier for us to read the cluster data and also for k-means. It's k-means has an advantage or takes advantage of our normalized data for improving the partition the, the, for, for partitioning the data. Here is even more uh, messy, so it's more difficult for us to understand why this group is here and the other see if the other dots are here. For example, and here how to partition the data or how the per, that data was partitioned. I cannot read how K-means found these clusters. Take a picture here and comes to compare it here. So you can see it's better for us to normalize the data for understanding how K-means cluster the data. And of course, it's easier for k-means to partition our data, data based in this in this data. Check the difference if we fit a k-means without normalizing the data. I showed you before how the are the results or the output with normalization and how the visualization works with normalized data and without normalized data. However, I want to show you how k-means uh, respond with unnormalized data. Check that I'm gonna use the three columns I, I, we talked before. I'm gonna drop custom ID and gender, and I fit the, our k-means object two, okay? Two, number two. And we come here to the result. I fit, and I run here. Check that is my second object k-means with the labels for giving the color here. And we have customer data. It's the original data, not normalized data. So you can see here, normalized data. Okay, and is that before messy? You can see here, I, I cannot really interpret interpret how these groups were found or how k-means partitionate this data. It's more difficult for us to visualize to visualize how k-means worked. Uh, as you can see here, this group goes from uh, twenty years to seventy years. Person from twenty to seventy years old. And that's this group over here with that we talked before. It's combined with other dots here, with other observation, other person, right? The same here with these two groups. How can means partition our data? It's more difficult for us to work with unnormalized data, and uh, K means performs better with normalized data, and it gives us a great advantage for reading. I show you this unnormalized data and unnormalized data to fit our K means object and with normalized data and k-means with normalized data. So you can see it's way easier for reading, okay? That's the advantage, advantage of normalizing data for k-means. Hope you liked the video. See you in the next episode. And any comment is welcome. Stay tuned.